Welcome to the Asset Bundle Future and Current Talk. Uh, I'm Ryan Caltabiano, uh, Senior System Engineer at Unity Technologies. I work on the Build Pipeline and Asset Bundle team. Um, since we only have about 30 minutes for the talk, we wanted to start off uh, by jumping right into, the, uh, into a demo of what we've been working on behind the scenes. Uh, this is the new Asset Bundle workflow. Uh, and then from there, we want to discuss the what we've released in 2017-1, and then talk about our future systems after that. Um, so today, uh, we require users uh, on the workflow side of things to take their assets and assign them to explicit bundles. Uh, from there, they also have to worry about dependencies. And then you have to worry about the loading APIs. We have a whole bunch of different loading APIs depending upon whether you're downloading content or loading from disk or loading from memory. Then you have to worry about loading those assets from the various asset bundles. Oh, and also worry about dependencies yet again. And then if you're working in the editor, you have to write a wrapper for all this information to do simulation mode. Oh, and we also have to worry about file sizes for downloadable content and deployable on Wi-Fi downloads for, uh, or non-Wi-Fi downloads, sorry, uh, for over-the-air downloads for iOS and Android. So what we have today is kind of a mess. So we wanted to show you the new workflows uh, with a little bit of a demo. So starting off with, we're going to use the survival shooter that's on the asset store. It's one of our complete packages. Uh, it's a pretty standard demo, nothing really all that special about it. Uh, but on this demo, we've got, I did an earlier build real quick. Uh, let's see, projects. And our earlier build, standard player data build, is 194 megabytes. Sadly though, that's over the size limit for most users to do over the air downloads for Apple and Google. So we wanna show you guys how you can take an existing project and convert it to using over-the-air downloading uh, with asset bundle deployment uh, using our new resource manager and the new build pipeline. So what we have today is our standard scene, uh, the complete game scene, and we want to go ahead and just move that entire scene straight into an asset bundle. So using the new resource manager, we have uh, this new section up here it's a addressable asset. It's a, just a checkbox to turn on and off various settings. So right now it's turned on because we still have this in the build settings. So if we open up build settings and remove this, we can go ahead and switch over to new, using the new addressable asset system. So we want to go ahead and just move this into the addressable asset system. So we just go over and check the addressable asset box. And this begins the whole setup process. Um, first, it asks you to save a build settings asset. It's uh, basically a settings container that allows us to save all this addressable asset data between sessions uh, and how we end up configuring all this. And now that we have this checked, you can see that it's addressable and it has some fields here that are a little bit hard to see. But if I pull up the build settings window again, you notice the build settings window has changed. This shows the new addressable asset workflow. So we have assets. These are the assets that you can uh, load at runtime via the new APIs. We have build groups, with, uh, or excuse me, packing groups, which allow us to specify uh, different group settings. For example, you can specify the maximum number of assets you want to put in that specific group, the maximum size, the packing size, uh, so you can get your content under certain limits, and we will do that for you automatically. Then we also have location groups. This allows us to specify whether a set of assets you want to download from the cloud, uh, from a CDN, or from a uh, locally. And then we have runtime settings, which is just a pretty basic setup. So now that we've got the addressable, at least the scene set up as addressable, we need to give it a uh, location uh, and a packing group. So let's go ahead and do location. Um, this first scene we want to ship with the with Unity, but we're not going to ship everything with Unity. So let's, uh, everything in the scene with Unity. So let's go ahead and just mark the scene, uh, create a new location called local. Um, we're going to want to do local asset bundles within the file. 
And we're going to ship this with Unity, so it's going to be in the streaming assets folder. So we're just going to give it an output location, uh, which is assets and streaming assets folder. So when we build, anything that goes to this location will automatically be packaged up and dropped in your streaming assets folder. Uh, then what we're going to do is change the packing group to asset bundles, and it's already in local. And the other thing is we're going to change the name of this first scene to make it easier to communicate. So we're just going to call this game start. All right, so we've got game start. It's in the asset bundle. It's in a local group. And then the last thing we need to do is set up a bootstrap scene. A bootstrap scene is just a quick scene that we can create uh, from this menu here. Uh, that basically sets up the new resource manager and tells the resource manager where the, all the content's located. So that way you guys don't have to think about uh, how to load asset bundles, how to download those at runtime. We handle that for you. So we're just going to create a new bootstrap scene. Save it to disk, and we want to say the new initial scene is going to be game start. So you can go into the bootstrap scene, connect to the uh, game object that we have in there, and add your own loading uh, screen, loading bar, progress bar, whatever you need in that screen. Or you can completely override that altogether. It's just a temporary script that we put in there for you guys. So now that we got this all up and running, let's just go ahead and do a build and see the output results. Uh, so we're just going to do local asset bundle build. Go ahead and save. And this is using the new build pipeline for asset bundles. Um, so it's right now compiling the schemes and packing them up into asset bundles. And then once that's complete, it's going to package up the player. Uh, so actually, it's still packing asset bundles right now. Uh, and now it's packing the player. Uh, one thing we will have uh, in the new build pipeline is a build caching system. Uh, that's not turned on for the demo because I'm still working on it, sadly. But that will speed things up greatly when that's fully online. There we go. All right, so like the with the previous build, the player data build, all your content was in this monolithic player data section as we had before. So you can actually see shared assets for the very first scene. Uh, that was 102 megs. So if we go to the new local asset bundle build, you can see that the first scene is that bootstrap scene, which is only 16 megs, or 16 kilobytes, uh, plus the resources and plus all that extra information. And the scene is actually now stored right here in the build bundle that we automatically built for you guys. It's compressed using LZ4 compression automatically. So it's down to 45 megs instead of the 100 megs. Um, and then at this point, you guys are probably wondering about shader variants. That's been a hot topic because, well, shader variants haven't been calculating very correctly in the new asset bundle, or the current asset bundle. In the new asset bundle system, all the shader variants are calculated correctly, and you don't even have to worry about that. So now, there you go. That's the new asset bundle build pipeline. Now I wanted to show you guys about how to use the location groups to do CDN content and deliverable of content uh, through the resources. So we're going to add a new location, just call it remote for short here. We're going to select the asset bundle remote and pass in a CDN location. So I'm just going to use a local web server. And here's going to be going to pass in the folder for the local web server, which is, if I remember correctly, remote server. Yep. So remote. All right. And then for the complete game scene, let's go ahead and move over the enemies to the uh, remote uh, the remote asset bundle. So we're going to go ahead and check the enemy's checkbox, or the addressable checkbox for each enemy, and give it a shortened addressable name. Make certain it's in the correct packing group in the correct packing location. So it's now an asset bundle remote. I'm going to do the same for these other two enemies here.
Okay, now all three enemies are in an external CDN, are set up to be in, deployed into an external CDN. So we need to actually modify some player scripts now uh, to account for that. Because uh, currently the enemy spawners, uh, the enemy manager uses uh, direct references, so we need to use, uh, switch those over to use uh, identifiers instead. So let's go ahead and modify the uh, nightmare shooter code to do that. So the enemy manager here uses a game object refer direct reference. So we're going to switch that to use string instead. And we're going to change the start code to use the new resource manager to load this data. Yep, thank you. There we go. Oh, can I zoom in? Um, I have no idea how to zoom in. I apologize. <laughs> Scroll wheel? Uh, oh, right, right. There it is. Is that better? Okay, there we go. <laughs> So we're going to use the new resource manager. Uh, that's located in the Unity Engine resource management uh, location. So we're going to just do a load asset, which is load there. And we're going to want to load a game object. Uh, and we're just going to pass in the enemy address that we just created, which is just a string identifier for it. Uh, now at this point, we have to, this is it. Uh, Actually, we want to do async because, well, async is awesome. And since we're doing async, we want to do a complete callback. So we have a new callback system here. And I'm just going to tab to auto complete that. So now this uh, calls into the resource manager, load async, the game object with the address we passed in. And it'll call this function when the loading is complete. So now I want to move this call down to when the load is complete here. And I need just to store the cached enemy that was returned from that call. So that's obj. That's result. Uh, so now we've got the cached enemy, and we're starting our spawner uh, with that result. And our spawner is same exact code, so you know, not too many lines of change there. Now, in our scene, once the code recompiles, we're going to remove these direct references and change them over to the asset names. So, it's on Bunny here. This is on Bear. And elephant. Okay. Now we're seeing set up to actually download this content automatically and spawn the enemies when the content is loaded. So if we take a look at the build settings here, we have all of our enemies, uh, the game start. Game start is still local, our enemies are remote. Uh, location groups the, for the remote asset bundle, we're using a localhost CDN. And we're just going to drop it into the remote server. So let's go ahead and build. This time in the remote asset bundle folder. And again, this is going through the new build pipeline. Uh, so it's the entire build pipeline is expressed in very precise, low-level uh, APIs. Uh, let's see, not that log. While that is building, let me show you some of the output from the low-level uh, APIs. So this is how we express the asset bundle content very explicitly. Pretty much every single object is defined 
uh, as to exactly where it's going to go. Uh, so you can build a lot of logging tools around this information on where your content came from, why it was included in the build, where it's going into what asset bundle. And the build is complete, so let's take a look at that. Now if we take a look here, if we go into our streaming assets folder again, we can see that the file size decreased down from 45 down to 37 because we removed the enemies. They're in separate uh, location. Um, so if we go back up to Nightmare Shooter, they're in the remote server location here. Uh, let me start a little shortcut web server here. So on the web server, if I open that up, you can see that the web server is now hosting that information. Okay, and let's go ahead and do our run. was not expected. Live demos, gotta love them. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yep, I have no idea what broke. <laughs> I swear this was working last night. Okay, so the point being is that the, uh, well, back to the original topic, our resource manager allows us to package content between the CDNs easily. Uh, as you saw, we can, just a few lines of code allowed the resource manager to download that enemy content and spawn those enemies just like before. Uh, and the new build pipeline is working correctly with the exception of that pink screen right there. <laughs> And uh, that allows us to make certain that the content that you're building is correct for all the shader variants, all the content that you're asking, all the dependencies are calculated for you guys. So there's a lot less work for you guys have to do in the future. Uh, going back to the slides here, uh, let's talk a little bit about some of these features. Uh, so some of the upcoming features that were shown off in, that, uh, in the uh, demo was the new resource manager. That's our unified resource management and loading framework. Uh, in addition, it also does ref counting, so it automatically will load and unload bundles, as you guys reference and dereference objects. So it'll manage your memory for you. It'll knows where all the content's loaded. It'll download the content as you guys request it. Um, and it's a single loading API that works seamlessly between the editor, play mode, and also in release mode. So it's just one API that you guys have to write, and it'll work in, no matter where you guys are using the content. Uh, the refactored build pipeline has cacheable incremental build. It's a basically rewritten from the ground up. It's to be cacheable, uh, better incremental build support, and deterministic in its output. Uh, it's very explicit in the way it assigns assets into each asset bundle uh, and know where those assets come from. It uses a two-pass approach instead of the current one-pass approach. So it does all its dependency calculation and all the uh, work that needs to, uh, it needs to do up front. And then after it does all that work, it then actually writes the content out to disk. So this makes it much easier for us to fix bugs in it and any issues that come up. Um, we also have upcoming fast iteration mode, which uh, was not ready to show off just yet, but this is where you can play your game on your device uh, while you're in the editor session. And as you're editing content in the editor, it will update on your device. So you can be playing your level, add new additional enemy spawners, and they will appear on your device when it uh, refresh occurs. Uh, in addition, we're doing a lot of load and memory improvements. Uh, we have a lot of ideas in the future on how we're going to take the current loading system and run it through some of the Jobifying code that you guys have heard a lot about uh, and improve the loading performance. Uh, then talking a little bit about what we've got today, um, we have the new asset bundle caching APIs. Uh, that was, this implemented an entirely new suite of API, uh, extended new suite of APIs that allows you guys to control the caching system uh, when asset bundles download and cached. 
Uh, you can add multiple caches in multiple locations. Those caches can be tiered uh, with priority loading. So you can load from one cache, and if it's not found there, it'll fall back until it does find it. You can delete individual asset bundles from an individual cache or purge the cache altogether. You can see what's in that cache. So we're uh, hoping you guys will use it and love it and give us some feedback on areas we need to improve. Um, we also have the new build window delegates. Uh, we showed that off a little bit in the demo by using the build button that tied into the new addressable asset system and the resource manager. So when we click that build button, it ran through the new pipeline instead of the existing one. And that allowed us to split building of the player uh, between different pipelines and make certain the content was deployed where it needs to be. Uh, there's also the asset bundle browser, uh, which we've officially deployed to the asset store, make it easier for you guys to get access to it. And that way you don't have to go to GitHub and download it manually and integrate it manually. Uh, continuing on on the 2001 features, we've added new APIs to be able to find uh, all loaded asset bundles and unload all asset bundles in one go if you need. Um, this way, if you're writing editor scripts and you forget to maybe serialize a field uh, when the domain reloads, it, you can use the APIs to refine out, refine your uh, asset bundles that are loaded and unload them or rehook up any references you have. Uh, we've also added as additional asset bundle build options, which allow you to customize the way you build asset bundles by adding a custom address. So instead of specifying it by path, uh, full path or a shortened file name. You can give it a custom identifier as a, for example, a GUID or any custom name that you want. Uh, also, we've added additional options to disable some of the additional lookup maps that occur at runtime. Uh, these additional maps were, are used today uh, to allow you guys to look up an asset by either the full name uh, or the full path, uh, the shortened file name or the file name plus extension. So if you don't need to look up uh, by all those different ways, you can disable some of those maps with those options. And again, memory per and performance improvements. We've done several deep dives into the memory and loading of asset bundles and found we were doing some things not so optimally. And we've done a lot of work on improving that area. Um, in fact, if you look at uh, from 5.3 all the way up to 2017.1, on the Android side, you'll notice that we went from about 20 second load time for, uh, on average for some of the larger bundles all the way down to eight seconds. So it's a pretty large performance improvement there. Uh, and at this point, I'm just gonna wrap up with some question and answers. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We've done news. Test, test, test. Oh, yeah. Um, with the new system, how do you handle the versioning? I mean, before there was hashing and manual versioning with increasing numbers. And right now, you're just building new asset bundles. How do you prevent that the old version that is live get new asset bundles that are not compatible with the new version? So the specifically on the versioning is not something we have solved in the, oh, a little bit too left, sorry. <laughs> The light was in my eyes. <laughs> I was trying to get out of light. Um, so the versioning is not something that we have specifically tackled uh, with these tools just yet. Uh, we'll talk a little. Uh, the plan is to talk a little bit more in an upcoming talk uh, about some of the uh, just, uh, feature, uh, upcoming roadmap talk. Uh, one of the things is that we are planning on doing a constant, uh, excuse me, content hosting service that will specifically tie in with the build process and handle versioning, patching, and it, a lot of features like that for you guys so you don't have to. Um, but that's an upcoming uh, different system to handle versioning in a slightly different way for you guys. <laughs>